Hi Moglets! Hope you had a nice new year. Today we'll be starting a new account. Why you may ask, halfway just because I wanted to and halfway because I wanted to do some more beginner guide type stuff. And for that, I really need to regain my sense of what an actual beginner is. So this account will be fully free to play. I do have some thoughts and ideas written down for uh, beginner stuff that I don't feel like I could fully embrace without actually being a beginner again. So this video will essentially serve as a day one. For now, we're just gonna follow the story, follow Paimon, go through the introductory tutorial you'll meet amber your first teammate about 20 minutes in you'll have a little mini game fight with this dragon as far as i can recall they didn't really do anything like this ever again the controls are a little weird but it's easy enough and about half an hour into the game you will unlock wish if you check your mail you will have a free tin pull here for acquaint faints and here's where you already have to make your first decision do you ignore beginner's wish and go on wonderlust invocation instead there are a couple of pros to beginner's wish first of all if you really want noelle she is guaranteed on your first tin pull and it will only cost eight intertwined fates instead of ten However, as it says down here, this is a beginner's wish. The wish count is independent of the guarantee counts of other types of wishes, which means you are not working towards a five star pity. On standard banner, you are. For me personally, it's a little bit of an OCD thing, but I would not want this minus 20% extra square here for the rest of the time I'm playing forever. So with my first 16 intertwined fates, I would do these first two tin pulls and remove this beginner's wish block. Though yes, it is important to realize you're not building up pity for anything here. With that being said, I am gonna go ahead and uh, do my first I guess 10 pull slash 8 pull here, and we are gonna get Noel, which is a perfectly fine character. Nearly all the characters in Genshin are good in one way or the other. Oh, and look at that, we also got a Chong Yoon. Very lucky uh, double four star pull here. This should go without saying, but especially if you're free to play, never buy acquaint feints with primo gems. You'll get these other five acquaint feints relatively quickly to do your second tin pull. Of course, after your summon session, you wanna gear them up as best as you can. You won't have too many options to start with, of course. Just read their passives down there, see if it's something that the character would appreciate, like increased damage against opponents affected by Hydra or Pyro. Amber's Pyro, it sounds like a pretty good starting bow for her Amber there. And we also got a nice little Harbinger of Dawn for our Traveler. So yeah especially as a free to play you will be running around with three star weapons for a while that's just how it is about 35 minutes in you'll enter your first domain this is more or less a tutorial domain so just go through it as best you can about 45 minutes in you'll enter your second domain again more of a tutorial domain teaching you about elemental reactions which of course is quite important and once you're done with that you'll get your second free companion kaya as you make your way to the various locations required for the main story make sure to activate any teleport waypoints on your way these make it easy to jump from one point to another so especially if they're nearby make sure to activate them and about an hour in you'll get lisa your final free story character at least also at this same time the introduction is finished and you pretty much have free roam over the game at this point you can check your quest menu and you can see that some stuff requires a higher adventure rank there is one here called kaya's troubles which doesn't require a higher adventures rank but will give us adventure xp for these other quests you'll also make your first offering to the statue of the seven opening up more of the map and increasing your stamina limit so you do have free control now but i would still recommend going for whatever quests you can for adventure xp also while you're going from place to place keep an eye out on the map for these little blue exclamation points these are world quests which can also give you a good amount of adventure xp the main goal for your first day is to get to a higher adventure rank and we'll talk about the specifics a little bit later we're starting with the kaya treasure hunt here which does take a bit of time but you do get a nice chunk of adventure xp for it so I'm not sure how long this specifically will go on, but there are 1600 Primo Gems once you level up a little bit more as well, so you can do another tin pull. About an hour and a half in, we've reached Adventure Rank 8 and Ley Lines have been unlocked. I'd recommend doing one of these as soon as possible, just so you're not at full resin cap, as this does refill very slowly and you wanna use it whenever possible. The rewards for Ley Lines, of course, do get better as you increase your level, which is why we're only gonna do one for now. After just doing one Ley Line, you have over two and a half hours, so you can do other stuff in the meantime to increase your Adventure Rank. We're gonna start with going to Catherine. The only thing we can do for now is get some rewards from Catherine. For every level we go up, she will also give you your adventurer's handbook. This will be a handy little tool to decide what you should be doing next. For now, we're just going to claim everything we've done so far and claim the main rewards here as well. You'll most likely be done with chapter one as soon as you get the book. Chapter two is where you can start doing more specific things. And this is a very good source of adventure XP as well. You can see we get a hundred per little task we complete. One of the easier ones will be cooking five dishes. So let's do that 
real quick. It doesn't really matter what you cook. We're going to cook some eggs we found on the roof of a house in uh, Mondstadt here. These are generally very handy. Even in my main account, I use them regularly to revive a character. And there we go. For now, we're just going to equip some artifacts we've randomly stumbled across, as well as the ones we got from Chapter 1, to fulfill the Adventure Handbook requirement. We can also enhance our Harbinger of Dawn to level 12 here, just enough for the Adventure Handbook. And hunt down a Cryo Abyss Mage, you can just click on it and it'll tell you where to go pretty much. Amber will be good to get rid of its shield. And from there you can just defeat it with whoever you want to. And there's also a chest here counting towards one of the other requirements. There's that one done. These next two requirements are a good way to get Adventure XP in general. Chest farming for this and Animoculus farming for this. I would recommend you use an interactive map. If you just Google Tavat interactive map, you'll get the official one here. You obviously don't need to start out with an interactive map, but it's a nice way to track your progress. If you do want to eventually 100% complete and get all the chests and all the animoculus. For now, we're going to click up here on switch and just focus on Mondstadt for now. I like to have the waypoints active, so I have a nice reference to where I am. And when you activate all the chests, all the animoculus, maybe even the Sealies and the other puzzle chests and things around here because they also give you chests, it can of course look very overwhelming. But what you want to do is zoom into a specific spot. Let's just start with Mondstadt city here. Can also hide the menu, so it's a little bit cleaner looking here. And we're just going to focus on the city to start with. If you can't always have the interactive map next to you, there are two things I really like to do. First, of course, is to reference the interactive map and make pins in the in-game map where there are chests. So once all the markers are set, I can put the interactive map away for now. And once you find one, you just go back to the map wherever it was and delete the pin. Chest farming in general is a great way to get resources, primo gems, and adventure XP. Unlocking teleport waypoints is a good way to get adventure XP as well. And with the help of the interactive map, it only took us about 15-20 minutes to completely get all the chests here. You can of course do it however you want to, I just prefer one section at a time. And of course with that we can claim this reward as well. As for using the statue, it's pretty much the same strategy as the chests, but Animoculus are a lot more spread out, so generally I would uncheck everything from the interactive map except for those just so they're easier to see. And hunt Animoculus separately. You won't need too many to get it to level 4, so we're just going to start down here. And of course when you get close enough they will actually pop up in your in-game map. So you may not even need an interactive map for the Animoculus, however I still would recommend if you just pick one while you're out and about, go to your map and place a marker so that you remember that you have this one. So you know later on when you're only missing two Animoculus you don't want to have to travel all over Mondstadt again looking for those one or two you're missing. You'll know which ones you've picked up. So we've collected a few around Windrise. Let's see how far we can get our statue. We just gave them all six we collected. For level four, we'll need six more, but that's not too hard. Some might seem impossible to reach, but there's always a way. Hunting Animoculus as an early game objective is a good idea as it will also increase your maximum stamina capacity, allowing you to run more and climb higher. All right, and there were the six we need. Let's head back. Let's take a look at our adventure handbook here. We have completed chapter two and we can claim these rewards now. For chapter three, we've already gotten a few things here and the rest of these things here are gonna be rather easy and fast. Enhance an artifact to level four. We also did get 10 more intertwined fates for hitting Adventure Rank 10. For reference, at this point, we are a little over two hours into our new account here. You potentially could get to AR10 a little bit faster following different methods, maybe more focusing on story quests rather than the Adventure Handbook, but I feel like this is a good general goal to go for. It's also good to teach you about the little intricate mechanics of the game. We have to raise an artifact to plus four. We only have one four star currently. The Instructor is a pretty good uh, early game set, and it's a feather giving us flat attack, which is pretty good as well. So feel free to throw in any one to two stars in your artifacts for now. I would hold off on three stars because there are some decent three star uh, artifact sets as well, and that'll be the majority of what you're rocking right now anyway. So we can go ahead and equip that. That has 100 attack on it, which at this point of the game basically doubles our base. We're going to go ahead and get our Traveler to level 20 as well, as that is a different requirement. Of course, try and be as efficient as possible here, starting with your big books, and then when you get close to the level cap here, use smaller ones. And there we go, can claim some more stuff here. Next, we're going to process three ingredients, so we can just go back to Mondstadt at this, uh, cooking station here and head over to this tab. Flour takes a very small amount of time and we have picked up some wheat, so we can just uh, do that. Hit three there and wait those three minutes. In the meantime, let's go to the blacksmith and have him forge something for us. There is actually a quest you get from him, which we haven't done yet, so we don't have any ore. So we're gonna do that real quick. You, you get this automatically by going through the main story. Having Noel makes this a little bit easier and general ore farming a lot easier as well. So with that done, we can ask him to make us one tiny little enhancement ore. Wait a couple seconds till that's done. Go back to the cooking station, grab our three flowers. I guess while we're waiting for that, we can go ahead and do a few more summons. Use these eight to get rid of uh, beginner's wish here. Hope for a five star. 
don't get a five star. Who is our four star gonna? Ooh, Singtro. Okay, very, very nice four star. He'll definitely be one of the highest priorities, honestly. So very happy with that. Now that Beginner's Wish is gone, you can go ahead and spend any other Acquaint Faints you have immediately on the standard banner. You can't use them anywhere else. And we'll see if we get any four stars here. We don't have enough to pity one, so we have to get kind of lucky. Last pull here, and unfortunately nothing. But four more Acquaint Faints, and we should get a guaranteed four star. Obviously, when it comes to Primo Gems, you should only ever spend them on exclusive banners. At the time of recording, we have Shogun and Ayato. So wouldn't be my first picks for my first five star. The chance of you actually getting a five star with a tin pull here and there isn't super high. And for these banners, the pity does carry over from one character to the next, even from character event wish one and two. So one being Shogun and two being Ayato. Hard pity is at 90, but usually you get it in, in the high 70s, low 80s territory at worst case. More importantly are the four stars that come along the banner because those are the most likely ones you're going to get. Using these characters to their full potential makes them quite niche, but they will be useful in general. We'll go ahead and do a tin pull just for fun since I am not expecting to get a five star here and any of the four stars can be helpful for one thing or the other, especially later on, so it doesn't really matter. A weapon, the Witsith. One of the best four star books, I gotta say though. Uh, so we actually did, didn't get a character, but a weapon. As far as weapons are concerned, I would more or less stay away from this, especially in the beginning and especially if you're free to play. The pity count for the next five star does carry over from banner to banner, but epitomized path does not. So essentially you choose the five star weapon you want, let's say engulfing lightning, and then for each five star you summon that isn't engulfing lightning, one fate point will be added until you have two fate points and then the next five star will be guaranteed to be this one. This does not carry over to the next banner. The weapon banner is for when you've saved up a lot of primo gems and are prepared to summon in two non five stars before you're guaranteed five star. But anyway, our flower is now done. So we can grab those two things and we just have five chests to open now. There are a lot of chests everywhere, so this should be rather easy. And there is chapter three done. Can claim these rewards as well. Chapter four is where it gets a little bit harder. Some are story related. So I'd say at this point, you know, you can do a few of them like enhancing a weapon to 20, but more or less at this point, I'd go back to questing. We did recently unlock act two, Shadow over Mondstadt. So we're gonna do that. We'll just stick with the main story quests or the Archon quests. Of course, at one point you should raise your characters a little bit more. Of course, depending on who you already have and who you wanna raise, you should be able to get them up to level 20 rather easily and give them some three star weapons. As we continue through the Archon quest, it's also important to keep an eye on the recommended elements up here. Sometimes you literally cannot get through a domain without having an element here. So going through the main story and getting some adventure XP, we have reached our main goal for today, which is reaching adventure rank 12. After you reach adventure rank 12, you can go back to Catherine and she will give you your daily quests. You can of course claim the rewards for the levels you have raised. In the long term, daily quests will be your main source of adventure XP and primo gems. We are a little over three hours into our new account here. You could potentially get to AR12 a little faster by using all your resin as soon as you hit AR8, your world level won't go up until you hit AR20, and that will probably take a while, which means the leyline rewards will be the same anyway. That being said, our resin is almost full again, so, so while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and do another ley line, and we will go ahead and stop by the other ley lines on the way to the daily quest, kind of just kill two birds with one stone like that. So we're done with all of our daily quests except for the last one where we have to give three wheat to Tommy. So I guess a tiny little tip here, uh, Blanche here in Mondstadt sells wheat for a 100 coins each. I used all the ones I found naturally making flour, so yeah, I kind of forgot about this. <laughs> and of course, once you are done with your daily quest, don't forget to return to Catherine to claim your daily quest rewards, and as you can see, we actually get quite a lot of adventure XP. And besides that, we're just gonna finish up using our resin on some ley lines here. Gonna grab a mix of uh, Mora ley lines, or the yellow ones, and XP book ley lines. Two resources you will always, always need. As far as builds and artifacts are concerned, you shouldn't need to care about it too much, honestly. I wouldn't even bother raising artifacts for now unless you need it for the adventure handbook. You should be able to get through the beginning sort of story content without much of anything really. You could invest a bit in the uh, prototype Rancor you got from AR-10. It's a solid little sword, so we're gonna get that up to 20. Granted, if you are struggling with something, you can raise some artifacts uh, when they very, very soon become useless because you have better ones, you can just feed them into the better ones, then you will get back a decent amount of the XP you threw into it, but there is some waste there. So this will be our last uh, blossom. We do have enough resin to do one more, but if we just click up here, we can see it won't be full for another 18 hours. So, you know, it's fine. But yeah, I'd say that's pretty much it for your first day in Genshin Impact. Main goals, of course, are just getting to AR-12 and unlocking daily quests, spending as much resin as you need to before you unlock higher world levels or artifact domains or talent books, 
something else you can spend your resin on. If you don't have like three hours to drop, then just getting to AR8 and spending your resin on ley lines is perfectly fine as well. But yeah, I guess that'll pretty much do it. You know, it was kind of nice just going back to the beginning and playing again. So yeah, this will be a fun little experiment slash series, I suppose. Don't know yet how often I'll make videos on this account. Could be once or twice a week. But make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below. Dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.